Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Alt Kings podcast. I'm your host, Tate, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Cardano Thor. How are you doing today, man? Hey, I'm well. Thanks for having me on, man. Excited to be here. Very excited to have you. I've seen you have been really a big part of, you know, the Cardano ecosystem as a whole, and I'd love to know more about you as a whole. So if you don't mind me asking first, who is Cardano Thor? <laughs> Who is Cardano Thor? Uh, Well, my name is Thor. I'm originally from Iceland. I live uh, in the U.S. now with with my family. Um, And I make Cardano content. I've been full-time in Cardano and and specifically Cardano NFTs. NFTs is kind of the, you know, the area uh, that I've been focusing on, even though I've been branching out lately. But yeah, I started streaming, started basically sharing what I'm doing. all the nerdy stuff that I'm doing, kind of researching <laughs> NFTs, uh, kind of diving into Web3 in general. So I, I just started sharing it and it kind of uh, grew from there. And and now I have my own community where the Vikings, the Viking squad, right? And we, we are, you know, all about blockchain, Web3, NFTs, uh, DeFi, and, and that's what I'm, you, you know, that's, that's why I'm here. I'm, I'm excited about this new frontier that is is being created. Yeah, I think that's great. One, I really love how your name is actually Thor. And two, I think it's phenomenal that you're from Iceland. I've never been there. Would love to go someday soon. Uh, But I think that's great. The Viking community sounds very interesting. Would love to dive into that a little deeper down the road. But what drew you to Cardano specifically? I mean, there's 20,000 cryptocurrencies out there. You know, mm-hmm. Cardano is a part of, I believe, the top 20 in market vo- or market cap. Um, what drew you to Cardano? Yeah, it's been a journey and it started uh, the beginning, uh, January 2021. That's when I really started diving into Cardano. And, you know, everybody talks about the whiteboard video, um, Charles Hoskinson whiteboard yeah. video, where he's sharing his vision. That obviously is a big factor. But um, to me, what appealed to me, uh, and, and I feel like sometimes it gets lost, like, why are we in, like, why are we excited about Web3? What kind of value is it truly bringing society? And for me, it's all about decentralization. And, and behind that comes adoption. Most people start with adoption and then we can talk about the, the technology and, and um, the kind of like more of the theoretical or the, the pure side of um, blockchain. But I want to start there. And for me, Cardano is kind of a step ahead uh, many different chains when it comes to uh, when it comes to that. So the methodology, you know the um, the the Charles's vision, the, the 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 decentralized nature of the blockchain. Um, I, I that really appealed to me, and um, but you know Cardano isn't the only one, obviously that with with that focus, but it is probably the largest. Um, so it has that balance of you know of like it it aligns with my philosophical. Um, viewpoints, but it's also one of the largest L1s, um, you know, out there. So yeah, that that combination, I just, I was really into. Nice. Yeah. I started my crypto journey about the same time that you did. I was mainly more focused and I got more convinced behind the vision between uh, between XRP and HBAR, Hedera Hashgraph, and I really Mm -hmm. fell in love with Quant also. I've never really ventured into Cardano until really now. And I'm really interested within your guys' ecosystem as a whole, because I know there are a lot of, you know, very structured and strong Cardano NFT projects within the space. And I'd love to know, you know, more about your thoughts on Cardano NFTs as a whole. Where do you see them going within these next, you know, let's say one year and then (laughs) three years from now? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, Obviously, Cardano... You know, we we do everything slowly, and uh, the the growth of Cardano NFTs has kind of been similar, right? Um, yeah. You know, we we the the space is pretty young. The first NFT minted on Cardano was 
it was a very, what was that? Yeah, March, probably March 2021, I think. And um, yeah, so it's it's a relatively new industry, yes. right? And and especially on Cardano, we're brand new and we're still trying to figure it out. But what what I really like to think of is, you know, which blockchain has the most room to grow. And until recently, it was actually Bitcoin, right? So okay. I like to I like to think of, you know, the market. Uh, let's let's take the market cap of the block of the cryptocurrency, and then compare that to the overall volume of NFTs. And um, and right now, Cardano actually, if we if we look at those numbers, has a lot of room to grow because this is such a large, like it has a pretty large market cap as an L1. Yeah. But NFT volume is super low, but the community is there. And we've been around for, um, it kind of, I don't know, to me, it has like the 2017 vibes on <laughs> Ethereum. Like we're, we're a little bit behind, but there's a lot of room for growth. And um, so I, I still believe that that Cardano's, um, you know, best days are to come. And uh, we're, you know, we've obviously been in a, a really brutal bear market, both for NFTs and and crypto and, and just the economy. Um, so, yeah, I, I've, I'm still hopeful. And I've been rambling so long that I forget your original question now. <laughs> oh, no worries. Um, it was really just, you know, what are your thoughts on the future of Cardano NFTs? Uh, but yeah. you, you explained it very well. Um, I think that, you know, I'm not too familiar with Cardano NFTs yet. Like I said, I'd love to get more in depth into the ecosystem. But I really <laughs> think comparing to what you've already said, Cardano NFTs and HBAR NFTs pair really, really well hand in hand. We have both very strong communities backing each other. Very strong, you know, layer one, uh, you know, blockchain or in HBAR's case, the Dara Hashgraph technology. Uh, you know, very strong, you know, we have fast, secure, stable transactions, thousands of transactions per second. It's all very efficient and sustainable at the end of the day. And it's nice to see what I'd really okay. love to see down the road potentially would be, you know, what if Cardano and HBAR, you know, were able to integrate and intertwine with one another in some way, shape or form. And then there was cross chain projects evolving. It's not a bad idea. And not even, you know, just Cardano and HBAR. There's, you know, we need to see more adoption and integration between chains to an extent. 100%. If we're able to see more chains, you know, intertwining with one another, that's overall just going to really bring everybody together and bring more adoption to the table. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 the goal, right? We're, yeah. we're all really uh, on the same team. I, I really don't like all the tribalism you see between blockchains. I There's think it's a lot. kind of silly yeah. because we're all trying to accomplish the same thing. Um, and, you know, if one blockchain is successful, we're all successful because we're pushing, you know, the the concept, the idea of Web3 and blockchain technology into the mainstream. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. And, and we should all kind of, yeah, I think the future is cross-chain, absolutely. Uh, so... Um, you know, being, being, you know, a, a maxi on one blockchain, um, to me, it's, it, yeah, it's only a matter of time until we, we start seeing more and more, uh, cross chain capabilities and where, where it's going to be less about, you know, the, the individual blockchains and more just about, you know, the user, the end user experience yep. and, and kind of using the technology to solve problems in in a way that is super smooth so people might not even know that they're using nft or blockchain technology so that's what we're really trying to do um and and uh, yeah so you know i love cardano but at this point i am you know what got what got me into cardano was charles's vision and sure. kind of the you know the 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 bones of the blockchain Right. Um, but what keeps me here, interestingly enough, is the community. Yeah. 
Um, so I think, you know, uh, so I actually love to see thriving communities on other chains because I, you know, even though my name is Cardano Thor, uh, <laughs> I could see myself um, enjoying communities on other blockchains because if you're spending so much time in the space, like at the end of the day, a lot of it comes down to the community and the relationships and the people that you meet uh, day yeah. to day. The networking experience, because there is a lot of possibility out there for networking. I mean, in a sense, we're kind of networking right here. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's great to see. And hopefully one day we'll get some more cross chain collaboration <laughs> between, you know, other chains, because I think, you know, that's really going to pave the way for more mass adoption. If we're able to find ways to, you know, solve Web2 and real world problems with NFTs, either, you know, turning I just my previous podcast that I was on with Atlantis, he was speaking about how turning, you know, physical artifacts into NFTs to preserve their value long term. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. a unique way of, you know, onboarding more people to this NFT industry that is, you know, overall having effect on the physical real world values. Absolutely. Yeah. I think there are so many possible use cases um, that that we'll see implemented when because right now the barrier to entry is just too great. You yep. know, uh, you know, when if whenever I start thinking about possible use cases, the first obstacle is always like, oh, but first we got to explain what a blockchain is and a crypto wallet and what a seed phrase is and blah, yep. blah, blah. Um, and that's, I mean, that's the main issue right now. It's that's the, the biggest barrier hurdle. to entry. It's such a hurdle. And, um, but, but if when, once we solve that, I feel like there are so, there are endless opportunities and, yep. and it's not just in, you know, it's not just in finance or in collectibles. It's, um, and, and you see Charles Hoskinson uh, talk about this a lot. It's, you know, in healthcare, education, yep. um, you know, government, you know, the IDs, you know, passports, yeah, exactly. all of that could be on chain. All of it. Yep. So that's kind of, that's what really excites me is how can we improve society with the technology? Not just like, Hey, how can I pump my bags with these, you know, <laughs> NFT collectibles? Like, that's great. Making money uh, while I'm enjoying my time here. That's great. And I talk about that a lot because that's what that's kind of the the audience that's here right now. You know, early adopters. We're still super early. It's kind yeah. of easy to forget um, if we if we compare our adoption curve to the internet, for example. We're, we're very early, um, but that, those are the people that are here right now. They're early adopters. Yep. People who are able and willing to take huge risks, and those are usually people without families and and. Um, kind of young, uh, a little bit younger or they just have have a certain personality but You're speaking about me are, right now <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> but once we are um but one of my passions is to and the reason why like one of my whys if you will is i want to make nfts specifically but also blockchain i want to make it more accessible to people old people like me i'm i'm almost 36 right so I'm I'm kind of kind of, I'm getting getting up there uh, compared to the general not even close crypt, crypto degen, but <laughs> um, but I'm also kind of young to some of the people that I talk to. Uh, I don't yeah. know how it is, um, um, uh, you know, on HBAR, like in, uh, on other blockchains, but on Cardano, I feel like the the average age is pretty high actually compared to what I yeah, see on Ethereum. Yeah, HBAR is the same places. way. HBAR's yeah. demographic is fairly high also in age. From what I've found out, I, I mean, I'm I'm just about to turn 22, and I've only met two other people who are the same age as me in this space. Everybody else I've spoken to <laughs> is either ending their the late 20s, or you know, yeah, starting their 30s or in their 40s, 50s. You know, it's it's exactly. a very wide uh, span of demographic when it comes to age, and you know, it's really nice to see because those types of people open you up to so many different doors besides just NFTs, because like I said, it's, you know, overall it's a networking opportunity 
to network, collaborate, and connect with people who have one, a like-minded interest, but two, you know, could potentially benefit you in so many other ways, as long as you reciprocate the values, of course. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I, I absolutely love to, to meet people of all ages because they, I mean, they have such different perspectives and they might be, by be here for different reasons, but yeah, yeah, again, like what I want to try to contribute is kind of saying that like, Hey, NFTs and crypto is not just for degenerates living in, in their mom's basements. Like <laughs> this is like a, this is like a serious, uh, technological shift and societal shift, uh, you know, that you can join even whether you're 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60, you know, you yeah. can, you can be here. And, and some of my, you know, some of my Vikings, uh, who watch my streams regularly, you know, I see 50, 50s in there, you know, uh, older guys who, who, um, who want to be a part of something, something greater. And, uh, it's never too late to do that. That's true. So I was that, that was actually kind of relaying into my next question I had for you. So I know you're a content creator. I'm assuming from what you said, you do stream. What platform do you stream on? I'm assuming probably Twitch or Kick. Yep, uh, started on Twitch, and that's that continues to be my my main platform. So Twitch.tv slash Cardano Thor. Um, but yeah, I've been been hearing more about uh, Kick. Yeah. Right. Did I say that yep. right? Kick. Yeah. Kick. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't really. They they actually just reached out um, yesterday, so I'm I'm wondering what that's about. I need to look look at that. But then you know I stream also on my YouTube channel and I make videos occasionally on YouTube. Um. Uh, nice. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, my podcast. Is, yeah. That. Amen to that. My, my main platform is YouTube, and then I also have Apple Podcasts and Spotify Podcasts also. Nice. Um, but, but that's great to hear. I mean, it's nice to be able to, you know, tap in with your audience at a much more, you know, it's a much more personal scale whenever you're streaming and you're being able to connect and speak to your audience as they type yeah. out their responses or potentially join you on stream. It just feels a lot more personalized, and you're able to really – get a better sense of who's tuning into you based upon how they respond. Exactly. That's, that's what I like about live streaming is, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just so personal. And I, you know, I'm very, I, I kind of got bored of making things too official and proper, right? I was a marketing manager uh, running my own business for over 10 years. And, you know, you always have to, you know, put up some sort of image, right. And you got to be professional and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, of but course. one of the reasons one of the reasons why I um, decided to go all in and full time in Web three is because I felt like I found my people. I could be completely who I am, and yep. I love streaming. Um, I'm I'm really bad at streaming, by the way. <laughs> it, I'm I'm a huge introvert, and uh, like, yeah, just putting myself out there has has never been comfortable to me. It definitely does not come naturally to me. But what what I do like is just being able to have it like an authentic conversation, laid back, authentic conversation with the people in the community. Um, yeah, I absolutely love that. That's great to hear. I feel the same way about my podcast. I really don't oh. try to have too much, too much structure around it. I like to have baseline questions that are there to be asked when necessary, but it's really just a free flow format. I want to make sure whoever's on the other side is very comfortable and it just flows very smoothly and we just have a genuine open conversation at the end of the day. So it's, that's great to hear. My next question for you is, would be, you know, what are some of your favorite Cardano NFT projects out there today? Well, it's a bold one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I probably should shill my own first, right? Is, isn't that how it works? <laughs> so let's dabble into your very own first. Let's do that. Yeah. All Tell right. me about well, your project. Well, it's I wouldn't really call it a project. So, you know, I put a huge as asterisk on, on it. Um, it's more of a way to support independent content creation um, and kind of be a part of everything that I do in the space, right? And be a part of the sure. community. So it's, yeah. it's kind of like a project that, 
is all about the community and uh, there's no you know we're not building a, a metaverse it's not it's not your typical project that is you know all about pumping that hype and 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 all that so but if you want to be a part of a cool community and and just have a direct connection to me and be one of my biggest supporters you can check out ct793 as in cardano thor 793 so it's basically uh, 793 tokens, which was the year uh, when the Viking Age began, and it's nice. all about the you know the Viking, the Viking theme. If you join the Viking Squad server, you you will kind of understand what's going on. Uh, CT I see it in your background, also. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, th you know, that's kind of my inner circle of Vikings. Uh, if you have a token, you you get access to. Um, you know, that inner circle and, and some other benefits. So that's kind of the, the main thing. Uh, but now talking about typical uh, NFT, NFT projects, more traditional N NFT projects. And now, you know, I'm, I'm only going to talk about Cardano, if that's okay with you. That's, that's kind that's of, perfect. Um, that's where I live. And, and compared to other content creators, I probably focus more on art than the average kind of um, NFT investor because, you know, I divide it into two categories. You can be an NFT investor or an NFT collector and, or, you know, or some combination. And I'm definitely a combination. A lot of NFTs I buy because I enjoy them and I don't expect to see um, see that money back. You know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's like buying art. So there are some awesome artists on Cardano and I buy some NFT art. Um, well, it's actually kind of underrated how, how well art kind of, um, retains its value. NFT art. Um, it's, it's actually kind of, uh, low key, one of the best investments you can make if you, if you find good <laughs> artists, but, yeah. um, Sometimes it's like that. If you buy it for the right reasons, then that actually turns out to be your best investment. But um, but in terms of like, um, so th so that's art, right? And then we can talk about collectibles. And a lot of collectibles, you know, you can buy as an investment. And yeah. so to name a few projects, um, the one that I'm probably kind of most excited about is called uh, Ori, Ori, Ori or um, their PFP collections is called Orimob. And you can find all these on jpeg.store you know, or, you know, or other marketplaces. Uh, JPEG store, by the way, has, has an absolute monopoly right now on Cardano, has around 98% uh, uh, market share. So, wow, that's yeah. a very good name to have secured also, jpeg.store. Yeah, exactly. So they, you know, they put, they started with cnft.io. They just a week or two ago they they uh, closed it, closed their doors, um, and and because JPEG Store basically drove them out of business. And um, so if you if you're looking for like all NFTs in one place, is JPEG.store. But I'm hoping to see some more competition. Honestly, competition is always good for the space. Of but course. yeah, or Orimob uh, is kind of my current favorite. Um, the biggest, the biggest collection is the Ape Society, and it's it's kind of a shame that I I never got into the Ape Society. But I know it's a strong project, and they are building kind of a lending platform right now that should be launching in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so that's that's uh, I feel like I should at least mention the Ape Society. <laughs> um, but another favorite kind of blue chip project is Clay Nation. And I've heard of them. Yeah, what I love about Clay Nation, not not only do I love the the you know the founders, um, the, it, you know they have a founding team. It's it's a female led project, which nice. is a nice bonus. Yeah, uh, but they've also just brought so much attention to Cardano, and they it's such a wholesome project. It's so unique. Uh, they everything they do is so professional and well done. Um, that I, I can't help but to root for Clay Nation. I'm not a huge holder. I only have a couple other NFTs, but yeah, I really like them. They've worked with Snoop Dogg, 
They wow. they have had some. They've teamed up with uh, Sandbox. They have had some some really big collaborations, and uh, you know, kind of outside of Cardano, and and so yeah, I'm really rooting for Clay Nation. So I'm assuming Clay Nation's probably actually physically made the the pieces themselves with their hands. I assume. Yep. They, everything it's you know everything is handmade, and then they they kind of uh, use a generative process to to put all the all the pieces together is probably a lot of work. Um, definitely, but, definitely but, that. But you know, they they were unique at the time. I mean, they minted in 2021. This was towards the beginning of of my journey. Um, I remember minting minting a clay nation. I minted four. Unfortunately, sold two of them way too early. But uh, wow. but you know, yeah, good times. Good times. Yeah, good times indeed. You'll forever have those memories. That's for sure. Exactly. Some things that I look into when investing into different projects. Yeah is really just the people behind the project. They might not necessarily always have that clear vision of where they want to take it, but as long as they're, you know, in my eyes, wholehearted, genuine, and honest about kind of like their vision that they currently have, regardless of it being long-term or short-term, I'll invest into their project. But they really have to convince me on that because I'm able to really see, you know, genuine people for who they are just by kind of how they portray themselves to be and speak. And, you know, it's... I got to speak to them first, of course. I'm not just going to invest in somebody's project just over the over the text. But um, yeah, I really invest into just really genuine, wholehearted people. And I'm not here to shill any projects or anything, but some projects on you know HBAR that I'd love to recommend to anybody on Cardano that is watching would probably be, you know, you have Hangry Barboons. That's probably the top contender right now for being quote unquote number one NFT project. I've got a whole entire list right here of just other various projects. Uh, there's also Panda World. That's another great project. And then I'd also probably recommend a project called uh, Vasizi. That's a music NFT project led by mm. an actual uh, music producer who's actually produced for Rihanna herself and has won multiple, you know, I, I guess it's uh, yeah. billboards or something. I don't even know what the music industry terminology is, but he's won some heftier awards working with Rihanna. But Very cool. besides the fact, I think both communities have, you know, their unique players, the people who's been around for many years and probably will stick around for many years to come. But what I'd like to ask you now, Cardano Thor, is where do you see, you know, the future of NFTs, say, you know, three years from now, outside of, you know, the Cardano ecosystem? I, I We've already touched up on a lot of it, I know, but... I'd love to see kind of more of an insight of where you see things playing out within, you know, just I'm trying to figure out the best way of wording it, to be honest, just, you know, <laughs> with having a community, where do you think these communities and the, the founders behind these communities, what do you think they should do to move themselves to the next level within an <laughs> NFT ecosystem? Yeah, uh, I think I, I know what you're asking and, it's um, to me the kind of the first bull run of NFTs, if you will, that started with you started on Ethereum. Um, yeah. I think was driven by the collectible space, uh, you know, your bored apes, right? And it's it's that it's it's to it's a it's a way to show status or buy status, you know. It's um, definitely and and that was that was all the hype right that's that's kind of the image that nfts received and we're kind of still in that era but i think that the next era is going to be or the next bull run is going to be led by like projects or companies that use nfts that create collections that are truly in innovative technologically and solve like really important problems and um so it's not necessarily going to be a collectible pfp nft uh, but it's going to be some sort of hybrid um so we could talk about gaming for example you know like a, a really innovative way to use nfts uh in gaming kind of like a digital asset exactly so um you know, but but also it could be in other industries like like travel or or whatever. Um, but I think that is going to be 
where we see like real volume pick up again is is when large projects and companies are using nfts selling nfts um you know as a as a way to to solve like meaningful problems and um use nfts um kind of you take advantage of the technology right not just so you know we're, we're now we understand okay digital ownership that's cool it's a collectible that's cool but now uh we take the next step of like okay what cool things can we do now that everyone you know society has accepted that digital ownership is a thing yeah and and that yeah i, I don't know if that answers your question question it does but, uh, but you actually of, yeah that answers that's, it completely. Yeah, that's where I see the space moving over the next like two or three years. There actually has to be, you know, a value that people can truly see besides, you know, a collectible to an extent. It's got to yep. really resonate with the investor, if that makes because, sense. Because because what what you're seeing with with Blur and other platforms is that you know we we've kind of reached the extreme, you know, and once yeah. we reach an extreme that's usually when we see like a fundamental shift because now we're reaching an extreme in my opinion where <clears throat> nft collections are just being traded like any other you know um shit coin meme coin where it's just like it's just about the floor just about volume there's a lot of wash trading and um you know nfts you know people are just it's all about the about the floor it's not really you know, people uh, buying the rare ones, buying really what they enjoy. Um, yeah. So I feel like, you know, the, the DeFi space and the NFT space are kind of merging into the same thing and it's kind of weird. Uh, so <laughs> I feel like it's it's time for something, something different. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And my final, my final question for you today, Cardano Thor, is what are you most excited for within the Cardano ecosystem that is soon to be coming within the future? Uh, there's so much to be excited for on Cardano. Uh, you know, Voltaire, uh, basically, you know, without getting into the nitty gritty, it's basically the 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 uh, improving Cardano as a blockchain, is, that's, that's the most important thing, right? So as we m m progress, the, the roadmap of Cardano development, IOG, uh, we are going to start seeing better, you know, uh, governance protocols. We're going to see um, scaling solutions, L2s, and and we're finally going to be ready for some some serious DeFi volume. And uh, just you know, so scaling and governance, I think, if to boil it down. To two things i think it's going to be great for cardano and whenever cardano uh improves the cardano nft space improves um you know instead of I iog and charles hoskinson who have who by the way should have the uh, the ultimate goal of not being necessary at all because it's a decentralized blockchain right we yeah. can yeah if they decide to go on vacation uh, for the next 10 years, it shouldn't matter. It's a decentralized chain. But instead of paying NFT projects, 200,000, 2 million to come over, please use our blockchain. The most important thing that they can do is to create an awesome blockchain um, that is, that is, has, you know, that is cheap, fast and secure and decentralized. And, yeah. and so, you know, as we, as we, keep progressing you know that's what i'm i'm most excited about amazing i look forward to it i'm gonna have to start dabbling in some more cardano nfts and i mean after this podcast if there's any any projects out there that you could recommend for me hosting in the near future or down the line that'd be great absolutely and, you know I'd, I'd love to host you once again down the road as well once we see you know more progression in this space we can always come back you know and rekindle our 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 relationship, I, I suppose one would say, uh, but just to, you know, yeah. reevaluate what we spoke about now and compared to what we will be speaking about in the near future. 
But yeah, Thor, it's been a pleasure. Likewise. Thanks for having me on. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll talk to you again uh, soon. Definitely. And ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, this has been the Alt Kings podcast, and we will see you all next episode. Peace. Peace.